We've worked with Amazon for quite a while now and we're offering our products as part of their, their library of services in their AWS cloud. And that's actually been a very, it's a still a small number for us, but rapidly growing. Just going back to security for a minute, I mean, as you, you know, we've both been in the industry for exactly the same amount of time, so we're both familiar with the fact that as an industry, so sort of partly driven by the media, mainly driven by the analysts, each year it's like the year of the dragon or whatever, it's a year of SDN, then it's the year of NFV. For me, it feels like next year is going to be the year of security, and that's what some of the analysts who work for mm -hmm. light reading and heavy reading have said as well. Do you think that's true, and um, that there is a growing focus on security amongst service providers and enterprises? It's how it feels to me right now. I feel like we're going to be talking about it a lot next year. Maybe from your right. viewpoint, it's just something which is always uh, you know, a prerequisite of any product which you're going to roll out. Yeah, I think it's growing. Um, and ser and service providers always seem to lag a little bit. Um, like the enterprises or yeah. the traditional kind of you know e-commerce or bank, you know FSI, yeah. you know um, because they have a different set of requirements. Right. Um, so w th what I see is a motion where they're evolving t towards a services model. Mm -hmm. You know they're coming from a background of being more providing bandwidth and pipes and you know rate you know plans and things mm -hmm. like that, but but not so much like services. And as they transition to more of that services model, that's where security is becoming more and more important. They, it's no longer about just protecting the network. They now have to protect applications. And you know, a good example is like if you look at some of the work that's being done, like in the, you know, I'll just use the example without using the customer name, but connected car network, mm -hmm. where where their infrastructure is providing different services as right. part of that uh, that infrastructure, which are application type services. Well, now they need to protect these applications. They need to make sure they're up and running. They're optimized. So they start looking a lot lot more like the traditional um, enterprises or you know FSIs and y you name it you know yeah. and, uh, it, it looks a lot more like that now and so they're evolving towards that but they have to do it at scale yeah you know it's a different model and and you have how many years experience of that at F5 now how long has the company been around the company has been around we, we went public in 99 founded in 96 yeah and so we're coming up on our 20th anniversary well that's fantastic I mean what do you think of these new uh, um, sort of uh, newcomers into the market, um, Avi Networks. They're, yeah, they're, 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 they're a, a new competitor, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, do you see them a lot in the market? Is there a value that they have which you uh, envy or uh, anything that you think that they're doing right? Yeah, well, they took the approach of focusing analytics first, and they're okay. leveraging open source mm -hmm. for kind of their core functionality, for the ADC functionality. And it's an interesting approach because it's it's kind of I'll call it a born in the cloud approach, mm -hmm. where they we can where they're trying to leverage cloud first, uh, and they definitely have some interesting kind of uh, capabilities in terms of the analytics, but but they're lacking a lot of the back-end functionality that enables that. And that's we think we have a, a really good advantage there because. Sure. Um, and, and I'll be talking more about this tomorrow on our roadmap at our analyst day. But um, you know, we, we've had analytics built into our platform mm. for about five years now, and we offer some six thousand different stats mm. that are available to that. We log these out. We don't have a central system for for visualizing it, mm. but we've worked very closely with companies like Splunk and ArcSight and other seam vendors to provide essentially all this analytics capability, right? right? And right. we and we can measure everything from you know, you know latencies and app performance to low level network characteristics to a number of factors and provide these things in the, you know through these high speed logging mm. um, so what what we're doing now as part of our as we're, we're evolving to the cloud is that we're also building our own kind of centralized analytics platform for visualization as part of our centralized management system um, as as a way to get better insights into how your apps are behaving, mm. especially in clouds where you may not have control over the infrastructure. I think that's one of the most challenging aspects of this is that you're now pointing to an IP address or a URL somewhere in the cloud, right. and you have no idea where these things are, so it's almost impossible to debug these things right. you know, without, without having some insight to where problems are occurring. Right? Yeah. It could be at the client, it could be somewhere in the transmission network, or it could actually be in the cloud somewhere. Yeah. And you can have different levels of performance uh, and so our ability to kind of provide those insights is, is real important, and we see that you know we have a we you know we we're uh, a big partner with it in Amazon AWS right now. We provide all our products up there. In fact, we've done some things uh, recently to enhance that with being able to help you know with auto scaling and other things as part of that. that um, oh, that's a very significant customer to have, isn't it? Because a lot of those cloud. 
uh, guys and, and uh, web scale companies prefer to just build stuff themselves, like Netflix, for example. Yeah, we, we've worked with Amazon for quite a while now, and we're offering our products as part of their, their library of services in their AWS cloud. And that's actually been a very, it's a still small number for us, but mm -hmm. rapidly growing. Uh, and we offer up our virtual editions uh, with different licensing, you know, options. You know, where you can do volume-based licensing. You can do, you know, basically monthly billing. You know, it just depends. It just works with their system um, for that. And that's been growing very quickly. We also work with Azure in the Azure cloud. In fact, um, we, we've, you know, we just released some new capabilities there. We're working with Azure and their Azure stack, mm. which is again, you know, part of their their cloud services offering. And then we actually just launched uh, not too long ago the F5 Cloud Ready program where we have validated our products in 10 different cloud providers, um, public cloud providers infrastructure mm -hmm. so that you know when you use our VE, it, it'll run straight out of the gate there and it's been validated for that and we're increasing that. So, so we're, we're taking a lot of steps to really focus on um, making it uh, you know, a good business model for customers to start running in the cloud. And then on the technology side, we're also doing quite a bit to actually make our technology more and more cloud friendly as we go along. Mm. So uh, image size, for example, um, you know, being a consolidation footprint, right. you know, our, our image size can be quite large. And so yeah. we've done a lot to try to skinny that down, but we're doing a lot more to knock it down so that it's much easier to consume, and, and especially in like Amazon, right? Yeah. Because the size of what you use, you get billed upon, right? And it can be anywhere from a few bucks a month to like 30 bucks a month, depending on how many gigabytes that, that, that image reflects. And mm -hmm. so we want to make it very easy and cheap for customers to scale depending on how they want to use it. Mm -hmm. And then we're also evolving some of the other capabilities of our product. Um, we had acquired a company a couple of years ago um, called Line Rate Systems. And they had a very um, high performance, um, you know, kind of ADC solution, virtualized ADC solution, and we're leveraging components of that technology to help evolve our virtual editions to be essentially almost like a cloud native application where it looks more like an agent that mm -hmm. dynamically attaches services. And so mm -hmm. you can have a light footprint, but now you can run effectively services as needed, and then you can eliminate those services when you don't need them anymore and do so it in it a very dynamic way. So it pulls it on, pulls it out. Exactly. Just, just as needed, sort of uh, like hot sparing. Well, it gets us away from having, today, you know, our, our, our model is that all the bits are there and you just license what's, yeah. what bits you need. Yeah. What we'd like to be able to do is create essentially a cloud library of services and then yeah. you dynamically attach those. And we have the- Does we, it happen instantaneously though? Or do you sort of have to <laughs> wait for a long time for the, 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 whatever it is, whichever service you're trying to enable to, to be pulled down and then enabled and spun up and all of that sort well, of stuff? Well, the goal should be, it should be very dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. It should be containerized, so it's almost instant as you bring these services on. You configure it, you bring the service online, and it's instant. And that's what mm -hmm. customers are looking for. They don't mm -hmm. want to wait five minutes. You know, they want, what they want is these things to be on demand, and then when they don't need it anymore, it goes away on demand. Mm -hmm. So it's a different model. So today you steer the traffic to the application. This means you attach services dynamically to the traffic, mm -hmm. and then you apply those services, and then they go away depending upon the connection. So you could have different services. Are you services. doing this now? That, that's happening now? We're not doing it yet, but we're, that's, that's the architecture we're evolving no, and towards. And what's it called? Well, internally, it's just our our virtual edition evolution project, right? So we we haven't really codenamed it or talked right. about it externally in any any detail yet. And well, still, when it's a you work do, we want you to come and talk to us first because I think that's kind of the future. So one of the things which I mean, you know, I think really is you know, very exciting about F five is the way that the market has come to you. Uh, you know, things are getting more and more complicated and the mm -hmm. action has moved higher and higher up this ISO stack. You know, really everything is, is focused around seven, uh, layer seven right. and above. Uh, right. You know, what's happening uh, on the cloud and above the cloud? How do you make money from the cloud? And that's really your territory, right? I Absolutely. Mean, and and yeah. the more complicated it gets, the more comfortable you're going to be and your, your seven development teams around the world are going to be developing solutions for that. So it seems like there's a really huge opportunity for F5 now. Um, where do you want the company to go? Where do you want the company to go in terms of the technology and the solution? Where do you see things going for F5? Well, we, we want to continue to focus on the applications, obviously, because like you said, that's, that's really where our strength is. We understand applications, we understand the logic, how they run, how they need to be delivered. Now, obviously, the footprint where they run is different, right? right. It's evolving to more of this cloud-based architecture how they're getting built and developed is different. You know, they're being updated very rapidly. It's no longer you know, a year-long release cycle where it has this big monolithic piece of code that's running somewhere. They're doing it very dynamically. So our functionality has to emulate that, which means our development 
is going to be emulating that more and more. And so we're going to be definitely, as we move forward, you know, we're moving away from these monolithic releases to much more dynamic, smaller, you know, focused releases where it can run in these different footprints. You know, right. we'll emulate how how the where the excuse me where the applications have to run, and where we have to run, and how they have to be delivered. We'll emulate that, and we'll make sure that we support that because fundamentally, the app still has to get delivered out over a network. Right. right. And that network's very complex, and the devices that they're being received on is getting more and more complex and it's happening everywhere any place any time in the world you know because everyone now you know there's no longer this notion of a real office hmm. right you know your office is wherever your cell phone is yeah you know exactly. in these days and so so we're evolving towards that model and the, fortunately for us like i said we've always focused on the apps versus being a network provider or something right. like that and the network is being abstracted now that's the big thing with sdn hmm. and which is great because you know we have to be a good corporate network citizen, if you will, right. and, and play with the network, but we really don't care about it. What right. we care about is there's an IP address somewhere, yeah. there's an app running somewhere, there's a user somewhere, and we can connect those, the, the, well, those across the infrastructure. Guess what? That's the, story of, that's the story of communications is that the network has become less and less in interesting, mm -hmm. more um, commoditized, and all of the action is in the, the complicated higher end parts of the network so again that that really seems to be playing to your strengths I mean you're getting up to towards a couple of billion dollars in revenue a year it's uh, obviously things are going really well do you think F5 can stay as an independent company is there going to be room in the future for mid-sized uh, independent companies as opposed to giant incumbents we just saw Cisco and Ericsson sort of get together in this Cisco and kind of uh, partnership sure uh, it seems like we're going to see a lot of uh, coming together of companies. What do you think the future holds for F5? Well, for us, you know, we're not losing any sleep over what we think our addressable market is. You right. know, we think right now our TAM is around $13 billion. Right. Um, and so you look at our revenue, you know, $2 billion, more or less, around that. So we, we have a lot of addressable market, we think, and it's growing. Our opportunity is just getting bigger. Uh, the, the thing also about F5 is that we're not really going it alone in the sense that we're part of an ecosystem of partners. Right? Yeah. We've, we've, yeah. We started out working very closely with the big application partners, you know, you get the Oracles, the BEAs, all the, all the big guys back in the day. And they actually developed in their software, um, you know, basically software that orchestrated our products right. because we provided that abstraction in the network, right, for the services. Uh, and so today now it's SDN partners, still obviously the application partnerships and cloud partners and all that. And so we're designed to be essentially a part of an ecosystem, right. you know, and we see ourselves as a valuable part of that ecosystem. Right. So the question is, will, will we ever get acquired? Who knows? Right. Right? I mean, uh, but we, we see a, a good runway and a good path forward, and we believe strongly in our market and our opportunities as we go forward. And we see the evolution as the other threats, but we also see a lot of opportunities yeah. where we can go with our technology. Well, the cloudification of the product, I think, is really important. I mean, for me, the, the future is a cloud, right? Mm -hmm. and, and more and more people are starting to realize that. The connection, which I think a lot of people haven't quite made yet, is that if the future is a cloud, um, doesn't it stand to reason that there's a good chance that the public cloud providers of the day are the tier one carriers of tomorrow? What do you think? I mean, do you think that Amazon and Google and Microsoft and all of these other guys are actually going to replace the AT&Ts and Verizons and uh, CenturyLinks of the world in 10 years time, 15 years time? Because I kind of have a feeling that might happen at this point. You know, it's a good question because who knows? But That's you see, why they pay me the tiny dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you see the you see um, you see the big providers, you know, mm -hmm. the big carriers, you know, building out portions of their infrastructure to enhance their services. They have an inherent advantage in that they provide the connectivity, right? Right, and the operations and all that, the bandwidth and everything. So, um, so that's that's a challenge, you mm -hmm. know, for a company, a cloud company, um, that 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 doesn't have that infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, what it also means is that the, the, the native cloud guys can also, you know, focus on investing in services, right? You know, and the, what, the reason I say that is that when I talk to the cloud, you know, the the, the the big service providers, the first thing they say is, look. I need to go develop services. I can't grow my headcount because I can't increase my OpEx. Right. So what I need to do is abstract my network in a way that orchestrates, manages, that reduces the number of people it takes to operate that because it's still got to grow, mm -hmm. but I got to operationally make it easier to do that um, so I can focus on developing these services that allows me to be competitive with these native cloud providers. Mm -hmm. And so you, we, you definitely see 
motion in that direction mm -hmm. in terms of what they're doing. And that's NFV, that is the number one consideration. They say we need to get to NFV because we want to make our infrastructure cheap and easy to manage. Right. right? And the way they want to do that is also obviously reduce hardware burden and costs, right? So get to a model where it's you know much more easy and repeatable to buy off the shelf hardware. Yeah. They need they want to be able to orchestrate this. So OpenStack is a big thing for them. Um, there's still a lot of work that has to happen there. And then of course all the network services, right? Mm -hmm. They need to somehow fold those all into that. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there's we, we and we're already in production NFV developments that help enable yeah. those types of things, so they can abstract and manage their services. Yeah, I mean, it's a big ask for the for the carriers, as they say, isn't it? It and is. In some ways, I feel like they're trying to climb up this mountain just to get to the same point as some of the web scale companies. You know, they're already sitting on top of the mountain and they've unpacked their picnic. You know, so uh, so we'll, we'll have to see. As you say, there's a lot of advantages and disadvantages to being a tier one uh, around the world right now. The good thing I think for F5 is, you know, you can't lose whoever, uh, you know, in that battle, uh, you sell arms to both sides, if I can use that mm -hmm. analogy. Uh, and, you know, just congratulations. I mean, it well, is you. a very exciting story and uh, obviously the financial results are, uh, are there as well, which is, which is wonderful. So, so I, I hope you'll uh, come back and share the news when you start rolling out these right. new software models. It would be my pleasure. All right. I appreciate your time today. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much, Carl. Really Thank nice you. to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you.